Now, the task of running the BBC has been described by one former Director General as an impossible job. Today, Tony Hall became the latest to take the helm as the corporation faces arguably its biggest challenges to date. Twelve years since Tony Hall last arrived for work at the BBC in his role as Director of News and Current Affairs. Returning today as the new Director General, he joins a broadcasting giant in a state of turmoil. The Savile scandal, which prompted the resignation of his predecessor, George Entwistle, still looms over the corporation, and morale has been hit too by job losses and cuts. Hall admitted recent times had been difficult and pledged to listen to staff and audiences, but he's also keenly aware of the challenges ahead. An inquiry by Dame Janet Smith into BBC culture during the Savile era will report later this year. In addition, Dinah Rose QC is preparing a report on how sexual harassment is currently dealt with in the organisation. Hall will have to appoint a director of television and a director of news to replace Helen Bowden, who was moved to director of radio after the Savile affair. He must also cut a fifth from the BBC's budget, amounting to around £700 million of savings. Plans to axe 2,000 jobs over five years have sparked a series of strikes, most recently a 12-hour walkout last week. And, of course, there's the perpetual cycle of negotiations over the corporation charter and licence fee. Well, I went to see Tony Hall earlier and I asked him whether he'd have done things differently had he been the Director-General when the Jimmy Savile story emerged. I don't want to judge uh, people who were doing what they thought was their best at the time. What I would say, um, what I'm here now to do is to say we've got to learn lessons. You can't ignore your history. You can't ignore what's, what's, what's happened. Um, but to ensure that we work as a team in this uh, organisation. The BBC is brilliant when it pulls together, that we um, work as a team uh, to create a compelling vision for the BBC going forward. The, the trouble is a lot of the people who presided over this mess are still here. They've just been moved sideways. Uh, I mean, you've inherited that situation. Are, are their jobs all safe? Are you, are you happy with, with still having them here? My aim is to, is to make sure I've got the absolutely the right team to lead this organisation uh, forward. That's why uh, the, 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 the top priority I've got right at the moment, and that means making sure that I've got a, a director of news and a director of television. Those are two vacancies. And then that the team works together and that we have discussions and debates about what we're doing, about the future of the BBC, um, about making this a great place to work, about using technology to pursue the, the aims that the BBC should have. Why I love creative organisations is because they're difficult. Uh, and because it's kind of, in some ways, you know, if you just have to, 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 to uh, uh, be wholly commercial about what you do, then it's kind of easier in, in some sort of senses, because either does it work or doesn't it work. It's much harder when you're working in an organisation like Channel 4 or the BBC, because you're dealing about creative decisions which are often um, at the margin and are greyer than black and white. But that's what I think is so exciting about this organisation. And what I want to make sure is that every barrier to making good programmes, excellent programmes, which is why which is what we're paid for, after all, that those barriers are removed. So what are you actually going to change? There's lots for me to listen to and learn, uh, but I say this, what we come to by next autumn will be something that really does uh, uh, set a new chapter for the BBC and which really does have a compelling vision for what the BBC is about going forward. Because I really believe powerfully that there is a greater case today for public service broadcasting and for the BBC than there was when I left 10, 12 years ago. But you need to persuade the public and politicians to keep paying the licence fee. Are, are you a leader who believes the BBC should be an organisation that does everything, tries to cater for everybody? Or, or do you basically think it should be more focused and, and, and perhaps doing fewer things better? I think, the, the, to my mind, what I take pride in uh, of the BBC just take the last weekend where you had the voice at one end and Matt getting through, um, hooray, through to John Elliott Gardner um, and a Bach Marathon on Radio 3. Now, what other organisation produces that diversity of output? Or you see uh, Doctor Who, I remember it 50 years ago when I was tiny, um, uh, now being revived. What matters to people is that they can see and can listen and have services that produce wonderful programmes. And that's why I think this organisation is so precious. Um, to uh, our national life and actually why it's so precious globally. But still and inform, educate, do, entertain. And absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I say uh, what's so interesting about creative organisations and why I love the BBC is I want to do all I can to enable the very best programmes and content to be made.